Hi everyone, a bit of a different video from normal, and one that was completely unscheduled, but we just got some very exciting news that I could not let go unaddressed by me with a quick video. Most of this video is heavily based on the new paper describing this animal by Sebastian Dahlman and colleagues, so if you're interested, do check out that paper, link is in the description. Ever since it was named in 1905, Tyrannosaurus has been the most popular and iconic species of dinosaur in human popular culture, capturing the imagination of millions. In many ways, it's also one of the most well understood dinosaurs in terms of its biology, thanks to the fact that we have many partial skeletons of it, all of which come from between 68 and 66 million years ago. And these reveal a huge amount about the animal's lifestyle, metabolism, uh, and thanks to the animals that lived alongside it and the morphology of T-Rex's teeth, we also have a pretty good idea about a lot of its ecology um, and a lot of its relationships with other theropods. But it has also been hugely controversial, as is the nature of basically all things vertebrate paleontology, and especially all things theropod. In addition to the continuous arguments over whether or not the apparent juvenile T. rex fossils we have actually are juveniles, or are their own genus and species Nanotyrannus, a debate which was recently reignited by a new paper by Nicholas Longridge et al. last week, last year, we also had a paper by Greg Paul and colleagues which argues that the specimens we currently consider T. rex should actually be divided further into three species but that paper hasn't really been accepted by the vast majority of Tyrannosaur paleontologists, and we've been left with an overwhelming consensus that, during the last two million years of the Cretaceous, Tyrannosaurus rex was the only known species within the genus, having appeared suddenly in the fossil record in Laramidia, that's the western island half of North America, around 68 million years ago when the continent was split into two pieces by the Western Interior Seaway. After suddenly appearing in the fossil record, it seems to have quickly taken over the apex predator niche from Albertosaurine tyrannosaurs, becoming the only large predator in the vast majority of the Laramidian landmass, depending on whether or not Nanuxaurus was still hanging out in the far north or not. Anyway, what's interesting about T. rex's sudden appearance in the fossil record is that this animal seemingly popped out of nowhere, and until now its closest known relatives, Zhusheng Tyrannus and Tarbosaurus, both of which appear to have been older than T. rex, were only known from Asia. But to make things more complicated, more primitive Tyrannosaurids than these have only been found in North America, in particular in Laramidia. For example, Daspletosaurus, which has been argued by one paper to have been ancestral to Tyrannosaurus, with no Tyrannosaurids known from Asia before the late Campanian. So the idea that was discussed in these three studies you can see on the screen here now, is that smaller Tyrannosaurine Tyrannosaurids from the northern part of Laramidia migrated to Asia across a land bridge in the Bering Strait, got really big, evolved into Tyrannosaurus in Asia, and then, when sea levels allowed, Tyrannosaurus came back into North America and quickly took over the continent's ecosystem. This all seems fine and good, but what if I told you that a new fossil from the latest Campanian to earliest Maastrichtian of New Mexico was about to make things more complicated. You see, yesterday, at the time of writing and recording this, a much more plausible new species of Tyrannosaurus was just described, and it was found in a very peculiar place and time if we believe the theory that I just told you all about Tyrannosaurid biogeography. Say hello to specimen NMMNHP-3698. These were the pieces of a skull and a chevron which were found in the Hall Lake Formation, a part of the broader McRae group of rock formations in southern North America. When they were discovered in 1983, 
They were originally reported as being bones from Tyrannosaurus rex, and given somewhat of a description by David Gillette and colleagues in this paper which I've attached in the description. The figures in this paper give us a great look at the animal's teeth, as well as the chevron bone which isn't really pictured in the more recent paper. Uh, and this paper gives you a lot more views of the skeleton than are in the new paper. Um, now, at the time that these bones were first discovered, the interpretation was that they were from T-Rex, and this made perfect sense at the time. After all, they are extremely similar to bones from T-Rex that have been found further north, and the rocks in question were then thought to be Lancian in age, which means they were thought to have been laid down in the latest part of the Maastrichtian, between 70.6 and 66 million years ago, based on the presence of sauropod bones in the formation. Sauropods had previously gone extinct in North America, but for a while were used as an index fossil because they seem to have reintroduced themselves to the continent, presumably from Asia, in the lattermost part of the Maastrichtian. But since that paper in the 1980s, quite a few bones of sauropods from older in the Maastrichtian were found in southern North America, and it's become apparent that sauropods were probably around for quite a bit longer down there than we had actually realised, so we shouldn't have been using them as an indicator of the rock's age. One of the other main arguments that these rocks were of Lancian age was the presence of bones of the giant ceratopsid Taurosaurus in the formation. At least, that was what we thought, until in 2022 a study by Sebastian Dahlman and colleagues, so the same team who just described the dinosaur this video is actually about, found that these apparent Taurosaurus bones uh, were actually more closely related to species from Mexico, and were a completely different type of ceratopsid, which they named Sierra Ceratops. So there's no actual reason to believe that these rocks are from the same time as T-Rex further north, at all, and thanks to more recent radiometric uranium lead dating techniques on the rock, a volcanic tuff layer 33 metres below the rocks that our new species was found in was dated to 73.2 plus minus 0.7 million years ago, and since sauropod remains are present 100 metres above that specimen, we know that it died quite a long time before 66 million years ago when the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. Based on the site's sedimentation rate between points that were dated using uranium lead below that specimen, bolstered in confidence by the fact that it clearly died several million years before the end of the Cretaceous, on the basis of the aforementioned sauropod, the rocks housing this titanosaur were found to have been deposited between 72.7 and 70.9 million years ago. Now this makes it between 5 and 6 million years older than the youngest T. rex fossils, and between 4.7 and 2.9 million years older than the oldest T. rex fossils. This also puts it in the same age range as those large Asian tyrannosaurids I mentioned earlier, and it was living at the same time as Albertosaurines were living apparently as the top predators further north in Laramidia. In fact, the southern part of Laramidia during the latest Campanian to earliest Maastrichtian seems to have had a completely different set of dinosaurs to the north, with Dalman et al. in their study describing and naming this new Tyrannosaur, noting that there's no evidence for any species of dinosaur crossing over from one community to another. Perhaps due to geographic barriers then, there was a high degree of endemism in Laramidia in the late Campanian to early Maastrichtian, where smaller geographic areas have their own distinct fauna. This is a very far cry from the more widespread dinosaurs we see in the late Maastrichtian. Dalman and colleagues found that this new specimen has several differences between it and the younger T. rex, but that among all of the tyrannosaurines we know of, it's by far the most closely related to T. rex, and they named it Tyrannosaurus macraeensis. 
If you're wondering why it doesn't have a cooler name, well, the best ones probably just got taken by Greg Paul's study, and the authors did not want to call it T-Mex, as the animal was from New Mexico, because they didn't want to rob that name from close relatives from actual Mexico if one gets found. Anyway, T. macraensis, or as it's quickly becoming named T. mac, or Big Mac, was probably around the same size as T. rex, with all the bones in the skull being roughly the same size as the average T. rex specimen. For the sake of stopping this video from becoming boring, I'm going to be calling Tyrannosaurus macraensis Big Mac from now on, because I like it and it seems to be becoming a bit of a nickname. When the skull of Big Mac is compared with T-Rex, a few differences become apparent. The dentary, that's the lower jawbone, of Big Mac contains 13 teeth, much like T-Rex. Unlike in T-Rex, where the back of the lower jaw is chunky and the margin scoops downwards, in Big Mac, the back of the lower jaw isn't as chunky and curves upwards. Big Mac's postorbital bone has a large boss that would support a small crest structure behind the eye, much like is present in T-Rex, but the boss isn't as big in Big Mac as it is in T-Rex, and is positioned further back and downwards. So Big Mac is older than T-Rex and has a generally more primitive morphology. That said, some of its features of its skull seem a bit too different from those of both other Tyrannosaurine Tyrannosaurids and T-Rex for Big Mac to actually be T-Rex's ancestor, since it's involved these features separately. Therefore, we should consider Big Mac to be the sister taxon of T-Rex, with both species being descended from a common ancestor in the Campanian of Southern Laramidia. This indicates that giant Tyrannosaurine Tyrannosaurids got their start in southern Laramidia, with one lineage migrating further north and out into Asia, while the rest of the group remained in southern Laramidia throughout the Campanian until the evolution of T-Rex in the late Maastrichtian, which then migrated north and outcompeted the Albertosaurines to become the apex predator throughout Laramidia. Why Big Mac got so big, while apparently only living in a rather small geographic area, is not really clear, but the authors note that Southern Laramidia seems to have had large prey species, potentially due to higher temperatures driving greater plant productivity further south, supporting large herbivores. So, Big Mac is T-Rex's big sibling, and would have fed on very big prey living alongside Sierra Ceratops, a large Edmontosaurine hadrosaur that hasn't been described yet, and a large sauropod similar to Alamosaurus, as well as undoubtedly a large number of other dinosaur species we simply haven't found yet. Tyrannosaur biogeography is really complicated, but Big Mac is opening up some very interesting questions. For example, why was endemism so high in Laramidia? What was isolating the different dinosaur species and populations from one another? And what allowed T. rex to spread across the subcontinent later on? I'm also curious about the lineage of Tyrannosaurines that came from southern Laramidia and entered Asia, but apparently never became a major part of the fossil assemblage in northern Laramidia, unless that is that we simply haven't found these species. Could it be that we'll find other Tyrannosaurines living alongside Albertosaurines, similar to how lions live alongside leopards and cheetahs in Africa? It raises a lot of questions that we don't really have an answer to yet. The paper also points out that since Big Mac isn't the ancestor of T-Rex but its sister taxon, there are definitely more than one species of giant Tyrannosaurid living in southern Laramidia at the same time, though it's unclear if they were living in the same or different ecosystems right now given the high degree of endemism. In any case, this basically guarantees that there are more species of Tyrannosaurus waiting to be found in North America, and a good place to look would be in the south, 
We know that one exists that's more closely related to T-Rex than Big Mac, and who knows, if it's found in Mexico, maybe they will call it T-Mex. Anyway, I hope you found this discussion as interesting as I did. Big Mac is certainly going to spark a ton of discussions around Tyrannosaur biogeography, uh, and is probably going to spark a fair bit of debate about how valid it is or isn't. All I can wonder after reading this is why we haven't found any Tyrannosaurines in northern Laramidia before the late Maastrichtian if they originated in the south, as this fossil indicates. Anyway, I found this really interesting, um, I think this is a really good paper to read, and I highly recommend checking it out. If you like this video, I am working on a review of the scientific accuracy of the environments um, and ecosystems and dinosaurs presented in the movie 65 next. Uh, I've actually been working on this video for a really long time. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and support the channel on Patreon. Uh, sorry for being a bit rambly both in this video script and now. Uh, I wanted to get this video out as fast as possible and didn't really have a chance to properly edit the script. Um, apologies as well if you can hear any rain, it's very, very heavy outside my window where I'm recording this. Uh, so anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, uh, and ciao!